Hi, welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. I'm half a Country Stitchers. The other half is Deb, but during this distancing time, uh, we aren't doing them together. So I want to say a hi to Deb. And if you haven't met Deb, she did video 90. Go back and check that out. And those of you who have been watching for a while, you know she's doing well, and she got very creative in that last video when she did that squirrel on her Sassy Jacks piece. So be sure to check that out. I wanted to just uh, let you know um, a friend of ours that sponsored our 36th video, uh, Stitching Treasures. That's Linda DeRee's former cross-stitch design company. She's doing quilting now. Um, she lost her husband yesterday morning. So I just want to let Linda know we're thinking about her. She's in our prayers. And um, if you'd like to get in touch with her, I'll put her email in the description box. I know a lot of you really enjoyed seeing the models that we showed. And if you haven't seen that video, it's still available. That's video number 36. And Linda, just give a call whenever you need to. This is a tough time um, for people who lose relatives and loved ones. Um, I know we lost uh, a member of our family in the last few weeks, and when you can't be together, um, it's difficult. I know the time will come when we will, but it's difficult for everybody right now. So thank you for sharing that moment with me. We've been busy. Um, we had Mother's Day this weekend. Of course, my kids weren't here, um, but I thought I would go back, do a little throwback here, and I have a question for you too. So in the comments, I'm gonna tell you now, I'll remind you later, I'm gonna show you a picture of my mother holding a set of twins. I'm one of those twins. So I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna say twin A is on the left, twin B is on the right. You tell me if you wanna play, um, which twin I am. And I had this up here in a way you could see it pretty good. There we go. I'm sorry about the glare. But that was my mom when she, well, let's see, I looked to be a few months old there, so she was probably pretty tired by that point. So left is A, B is on the right, and see if you can guess which one of those two girls was me. Um, my son sent me this really pretty uh, arrangement of flowers for Mother's Day. That was nice. Aren't they gorgeous? They were really elegant. It's nice when sons remember their moms. Daughters always remember moms, too. It's fun when sons do, because they always have somebody special in their lives besides mom. And then we had some new births outside. We had... Our little robin nest hatched and we got this picture because this little guy built the nest right on the ledge of our garage it actually knocked the screen into the garage building the nest uh, oh you can kind of see the vented screen that sits in the window it's just one of those ones you close your your top window sash down on and anyway so when Rick was mowing the other day she got really upset with him and flew up into the tree and was giving him what for. And so when I went to take a picture, he said, here, I'll take it. I'll just go out. She's not there now. And so that's how we got in on that one. And then this is my grand puppy, Oliver. He's doing well. Isn't he a cutie pie? I haven't met him. He lives in Illinois. Someday I will meet him. So that was this weekend anyway with Mother's Day and some thoughts about Mother's Day. But we've been busy. I had um, two Zoom meetings. I'm sure you've heard the term and maybe seen a few yourselves. They've been doing them on floss tube. Um, a lot of families are doing them to keep in touch. Some churches that are smaller are doing them with small congregations. It's just really interesting how many of these teleconference meetings are coming up. But um, I had the pleasure, the first one I did was with the Willow Tree Sampler Guild. And... Uh, for those of you who have watched Country Stitchers, you might have heard us refer to um, our posse, the group that goes to the Salty Yarns retreats together and, and other places <laughs> as we can identify them in advance. But Willa is the president and founder of Willow Tree Sampler Guild. 
and uh, she invited me to join in with a few of the other members. And um, we were also joined by Nicola Parkman. And that was really fun. I have not met her. I've not had the privilege of taking a class with her yet, but it was really fun to see what she was doing and not just be watching a floss tube video, but have her sitting there stitching while we were busy stitching. And boy, are the ladies in that guild talented stitchers. It was just beautiful to see the different projects they were working on. And then the second meeting we did um, was actually our round robin group from back in the day when Country Stitchers did their round robin. And our group has stayed in touch through text group and uh, Barb lives nearby. Pat, our other member, is in Illinois, very near to where my son lives. And then Becky is the farthest away and she's down in Texas. And she has a floss tube channel too called Socks for Mom. So uh, that's my group from Round Robin. I wonder, is there anybody else right now still in touch with their group? Um, leave a comment if you are and if you guys are staying in touch during this time when you need to have a fellow stitcher around. It'd be fun to see. Um, and if there's any other groups meeting, that would be fun to know about. I've had quite a few things come in the door. I've kind of got things spread around, so please forgive me um, for reaching. And I'm trying to keep my phone from shifting. But it's a new phone. It's It must be a little bit different, uh, maybe a little thinner, because it doesn't stay in my stand quite as well. But I'm hoping it'll give us um, a little bit easier time with our recording and our video quality. Um, just because the other one was plain old. Um, I've been working on some beading. Um, I've been on the internet looking around. Got a variety of things. I want to show you something I got in the mail. I actually bought this as a gift. I was out just looking around at different things on, I think it was, might have been on Etsy. But this little fob is adorable and we have friends um, that I met these people through my husband he's a musician and he does a lot of open mics and one of the men who does and holds and sponsors the one open mic that Rick goes to um, their family likes to camp and they have a camper and they travel and I saw no oh, he's not going to turn come on cooperate there we go this little travel camper fob and I thought it was adorable this came from Stitchingly Along by Sharice Smith. She's on Etsy. Anyway, isn't that just, that's the back of it. And the, oops, come back. And there's the front of it. And she put on some really pretty little um, chiseled glass beads. Anyway, I think they'll, they'll enjoy it. I'm going to put together a little, um, like a sewing kit and give it to them to stick in their camper and put this on the scissors. That'll be fun. I, I like to find things for people, um, as gifts when I see them. I, I never remember to go back and get them if I don't get them at the time. So I'm going to stick that away. Then I did some ordering for some finishing and I was looking for silk ribbon. This is one of the pieces of silk ribbon I got. This was, I believe, also through Etsy. It's, uh, the store is Thunder Moon, and it's Dina Greenwood, and uh, she sells hand-dyed silk and silk ribbon, and this ribbon it was just one color. I'll bet the palette of colors had to have been at least 30 to choose from. And she sells them in packages. I bought this one and four other ones. You'll see them a little bit later with the finishing I'm doing. So anyway, that was fun. Um, that's a tough one to find, um, hand-dyed silk ribbon like that. I don't know where they get them when they come in the kits. And they're some of them are, you know, quarter inch. Some of them are half inch. I don't know where those come from. Um... But if you do know, I'd love to know where I could source some more. I also picked up a pattern by Stacy Nash. Um, 
primitives. It's called a sewing pocket and fob. At first, when I saw it, I thought it looked more like maybe an... I don't know why I did. When I say this, you're going to wonder why I did too. But I thought it looked more like a scissor fob or a scissor holder pocket, if you will. And now that I look at it and I see the difference in the size between the scissors and the pocket, I should have known it was a project pocket for like different tools. Um, but it's very neat. I love the alphabets that are on it. And I like the way she designed it. It's very easy to finish. It's all done on one piece and you just fold it and seam it. Um, I've done pieces like that, but they were much smaller. So I'll be anxious to see what this looks like. Um, if I decide not to do it, I do have a friend I know would probably really appreciate that. And then um, Nicola on our Zoom meeting was talking about what she had or someone was mentioning something they were working on. I forget how I picked up on it. But then I went out and watched her floss tube video where she talked about the PDF patterns that she had developed. And she did it for this time period. Um, and she calls them a little gem from Hands Across the Sea Samplers. And this one is Mary Steed 1824. And I really liked it. So I got this one. And I haven't pulled the colors yet for it. I like samplers every now and then that are not the mirrored samplers, like a lot of them are. I find those to be very, very elegant, but sometimes I find these to be really interesting to look at when all the motifs are different. So this one, it says, it has the alphabets and says, Oh, love the Lord and the will be a tender father unto thee. And he will be a tender father unto thee. I'm sorry, I misread that. Um, age 12. Mary Steed, oh, the work these young ladies did back in the day. Okay, I did have a couple more things come in. These fed my beading habit, um, which you'll see I did a lot of that this last couple weeks. But there was a mixed bag that got my attention. These all came in through um, Fire Mountain Gems. Um, I really like them. Sorry, I'm adjusting you again. Uh, I may actually have to adjust that more permanently. Um, they had a, a mixed bag of gemstones that were polished and finished, and these ranged from small, which I thought might be nice on my fobs, some small sort of white beads for the fringe on some of my fobs, or for the, the top part that leads to the clasp. And they had them in natural colors. It basically was a huge handful of really different ones. And then there were a couple larger ones that would make kind of a pretty focal point in something. So that was fun. And then as I make fobs, I like to order the beads if I really like the fob um, and then be able to make them again. And so I, I got a stash of beads to fill in the blanks on the ones that you're gonna see later. And I still have to order the charms for them. I have not gotten the charms yet. I thought I'd order those as I go um, cause I can't use them right this second anyway. Um, let's see. I did have, um, that's, that's pretty much, oh no, gosh, I almost forgot. I showed you the beads and forgot to show you the bead holder. You've probably seen these. These are by Daris. Um, they're called Bead Storage Solutions. Elizabeth Ward and Company is the one who designed them. Darius gets involved there somewhere. I'm not sure how. Um, but you can buy different sized containers that go inside of them. These are the smallest ones. And I like them because they hold about 7 to 10 grams of beads. That's the whole container right there. And they have labels that fit on the top, and then they slide in. Um, labels are removable, and you get a set of them with the with the case. Now, they're pricey. They're uh, full retail, probably around forty dollars, maybe even a little higher, depending on where you buy it. But I like to go out and search for them and find them on sale. And when I do. Um, whether it's 
Amazon or um, Joann's with a 50% coupon or Michael's, somewhere like that. Um, I take advantage of another tray. They range in size. You can get the smallest ones like this, and there's 82, I think, in here. And then you can get gradually larger containers, and you can mix the size of the containers in the rows, um, but they're all the same width. So uh, all of them will fit together nicely uh, in the trays. I think this is my fifth, fifth tray um, over the years, and I, I really do like them. I must, or I wouldn't keep doing it. Now, let's see. Please bear with me. I sat down thinking earlier this afternoon that I had my content together and ready to do a video. Thought it might take, oh, maybe a couple minutes to pull it together. It's now after 10 o'clock. I stopped to have dinner with my husband and I came back again. And I could not believe how much information there was between visiting my emails and comments and doing the subscriber stuff that I had to do. Anyway, I hope I get it all in. And I hope I don't go too quickly while I'm doing it. But a few inquiries. One of them uh, was from a viewer who wanted to know where did I get my thread drops. She was looking at the thread drops I use to hold my threads. You've seen these, I'm sure, on Etsy. A lot of different people are selling them. They use different kinds of cardstock. Some of it's uh, like um, scrapbooking cardstock. They're really cute and pretty. Um, but these are nice and sturdy also, and they're easy to come by. I got these at our local needle workshop. Um, Cross Town Stitches Unlimited, Pat carries them. Um, she had some after the Nashville um, market video that we did, and I happened to be in the store and saw them and I grabbed them, um, but I've seen them in other shops. And also Access Commodities is who puts them out and they have a website. So I will put that information for these in the description box on this video. Then another viewer was looking at the Biscornu that I did, um, the Hardanger Biscornu, in my last video of finishes, and um, she wanted to know what the color number was on the floss. I didn't mention it during the video, but I did remember to put it into the description box. So if you read the description box, you would have found it if you were, you know, just perusing it, but. I wanted to make sure I mentioned it. Um, it's 81084, and it's a Threadworks Pearl Cotton. And if you're going to Google Threadworks online, that's O-R-X. The word thread and then W-O-R-X. This is their, their logo. So anyway, this is a really rich um, Christmas color. And if you didn't see the Biscornu, go back a couple of videos, it's in there. Now, let's see. Oh. You remember right before Deb and I quit doing videos together, we mentioned the program by Brenda Gervais that she was going to do in the fall called Coming to America. Um, I had first talked about it in the Nashville Market video with Pat at Stitches Unlimited. And then Deb and I updated you on a little bit more of the information. Well, Pat put out a newsletter this month. And I wanted to just let you know what she shared um, about coming to America. And let you have another look at the sampler. It's... A longer, narrower sampler. I really love the motifs. The top has a Mayflower. Then there's some ladies and motifs there. Then there's... A list of the names of the ladies who were on the Mayflower. And then it says we are living in the tomorrow for which they wrought. 2020. And at the bottom it says Plymouth. And it has another motif So let's see if I can give you the down and dirty on this. 
It's 125 by 434 stitches. It's designed to be done either Ada or linen. And there went the phone. I'm just gonna put you back. I'm not gonna start this over. Let's see if I can do this without doing that again. It must be a difference in the phone. <laughs> I hope this sounds good. <laughs> That's what I was hoping to improve with a new phone, but partly was the sound. So, it's a longer, narrower sampler, as you can see in the picture. Um, oh, I was telling you about the linen. It can be linen or Ada, and it's uh, suggested fabric for this is going to be Country Mocha. Um, Deb and I really like that. In fact, that's the fabric we chose to do our fall project with HodgePodge on, our day treat. Um, you may remember that. I did mine on Ada, and she did hers on the linen. Um, if you want to participate, you need to contact... Stitches Unlimited, if you're in this area or if you don't have a local needlework store, or contact your local needlework store to see if they're participating and they're open. And the registration needs to be by mid-June because she has different parts of this that have to be put together specifically for this stitch along. What she's doing is this comes from Brenda with the pattern. Let me read all of it right off of here so I don't leave it out. Um, it comes with the chart for the sampler, a label to sign and date the finished sampler, a Pilgrim Lady needle anchor, which sounds like a needle minder, perhaps, a piece of cotton fabric, and a free bonus chart called Harvest Blessings at the conclusion of the stitch along. And the fabric um, that you're going to get with that bonus chart to stitch on or to, no, it's for finishing. I'm sorry, it's not a stitching fabric. It's a finishing fabric for the for the little chart, and it is a reproduction of the Mayflower Passenger William Bradford's handwritten journal, which was designed specifically for the project. So, uh, to keep your stitching state safe and secure. Um, they're doing a box and it's a printed box. It's got some kind of a design on the front of it. And that will all come as your custom kit. That total, everything there that I mentioned, is $35. Then your fabric and threads to do the project are being kitted by the store. So by June, mid-June, your shop needs to know that you're participating so they can get the numbers to Brenda and then they'll be kidding the fabric and the thread and it'll all be there for you mid-August they hope to have it all to the shops so that um, you'll be ready to start and then the stitching runs from September 66 days from the start date, which I believe was around September 9th through November something. Um, we gave all those details a while back. Um, so if you have any questions, um, contact your local needle workshop or maybe uh, even venture out to Brenda Gervais' website to see what might be out there. I have not been there because I've had all this information provided to me from Pat. So um, Deb and I are going to participate. We're excited. It'll be something fun for the fall. We're, we're getting involved in more stitching endeavors, and that's kind of fun. Um, we have a couple things up our sleeve, too, uh, that are in the works, and we're anxious to show you those, but we're not going to get to any of that until we're back together again. So don't hold your breath. We're going to wait until all this is done. The last comment I had that I wanted to talk about today, and bear with me if I haven't gotten back to you or you're waiting on information from me. Um, I had a week where I wasn't feeling up to par and I'm still catching up on correspondence, but I will get back to it. Um, I kind of had to draw a line in order to get this video done. And so my line ended with this next comment that was still just sort of in the back of my mind from several videos ago. I mentioned a pattern called Noel. And I said it struck my geeky side because it was a sampler with no L in it. 
and that was what you had to pick up from the ornament was that it was called Noel. And for some reason, I just liked it. I haven't stitched it yet myself, but someone then asked me, where did I get the pattern? Well, I couldn't even actually remember where I had it. So I was looking for it and I decided I would, I knew it was an ornament. So I was pretty sure it came from just cross stitch annual ornaments issue. So back to the bins I went and it was during the Phyllis Hoffman era of magazines, which I just loved those issues of that annual Christmas ornaments. Um, and so I'm going to share with you uh, how I spent a couple of afternoons trying to find that information and what I found while I was doing it. And pardon me again, I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to have to find another way to do this for our next video. Oh well. Technical crew took the week off. <laughs> okay, let's see. I did find one thing in with these um, ornament issues and my... Um, bins that I had designed myself and I thought I'd show you. I stopped on it because I didn't like the way the bow looked and I just haven't gotten back to it. But my inspiration was Deb when we first met and uh, it was supposed to be a friend is a gift and I, I designed that. So that's what the A in the bow is for a friend and a gift. And it was going to be a Christmas ornament designed for her by me. And it probably still will be if I ever get back to that blessed little bow. <laughs> I don't like it. And I, I now have several ideas in mind of what I can do. It's funny how over time you gather ideas from other people's finishes, from different patterns, uh, different fabrics and threads. And now several things come to mind when I saw this. I thought, why did I not? And then I realized, well, I probably hadn't seen anything like that at the time. So that was fun. Forget you saw it, Deb. Now, we'll start, I'm gonna do these in the order that I looked through them. Um, and the funny thing was I was finding the first one, um, 2005. So I went through maybe two magazines before I ran across it. But this number five is the Noel ornament. And if you can see that, you'll understand it. I would probably stitch it. I, I believe that's stitched over two. I would probably do mine a little bit smaller. Um, but then I also found that I had already stitched this one and this one, but I haven't done anything with them. So uh, this one, I believe number two was by Old Colonial. Yeah, Pam Reed at Old Colonial. And I have a little Christmas tree that goes on the side over here, a little brass one. I just need to get a little frame for it. That would be easy peasy, wouldn't it? And then this one was another one. This one was designed by Angel Stitchin, and it was called Oh Christmas Tree. I really liked the contemporary look of that. In fact, I stitched four of these, and I did them on different fabrics, and um, some of them over one and some of them over two and I gave them away that Christmas. This was just one that I had for myself and I haven't done anything with it yet. So uh, this is just full of ornaments. That's the 2005 edition. Pardon me again. I think that must have wheels on it because that is literally just crawling out of there. That's ridiculous. Anyway. 2006. This one had an ornament in it that I stitched because it reminded me so much of my house. Uh, the first house that I had with my family. Um, this was the ornament down here. And then that was my finish. And that one was done by Country Cottage Needleworks. It's called Winter's Eve. And then um, I wanted to show you this one by Homespun Elegance too. I've seen several things they do like this and I really liked that Christmas design. It's really pretty. 
These are in the 2006 issue. This is what gets started when I go back through the bins. Then I ran across Santa. I had stitched him. And this was done by Knotted Tree Needle Art. And there was another one in this issue that I really liked. This was my very first hands down ever. I was I was actually back here in Pennsylvania. We were living in Illinois. And I was back here having some surgery for my back. And this issue had come in and I got what I needed and just told myself I'm gonna learn something new while I have to sit here. And this was my very first heart anger. And this pattern, let me pull that whole thread out of there because I haven't finished this other side. That's why the thread's hanging there. But the pattern, I guess it actually sits this way. This is one and this will be the other one, but they wrap around candles. And they're not hard to do, and I was able to do two of them real easily. I even bought the beads by Mill Hill to finish the top of it. And I realized when I found these and pulled them out again, I have four of these electric candles in the front of the house. And I could do one. I, I would only need to do two more to have them all outfitted. It would be really pretty. So, and you guys ask questions and send me to the bins. I get myself in more trouble. So I'm certainly not running out of anything in the next short order here. Okay, that was issue 2007. And I, let's see, which one of these? Oh, this one is beautiful. I ran across this Biscornu, and I just really, really like it. Look at the work on that. It's very pretty. And it is done by Kitty and Me Designs, and it's called Poinsettia Biscornu. And that really got my attention when I was going through these the other day. Let's see, there's one more. This one. Um, this is like a needle roll, and it's, it's an ornament. It's called Hands to Work, or it's by Hands to Work, and it's called Joy, which you'll understand when you see it. But isn't that pretty? It looks looks very primitive to me almost. I like the the font, the way they did the word. And then I really like that star up here too. That's pretty. And that star was designed by Lottie Da, which I actually have another pattern here by Lottie Da that has a star and I think you'll like it. Those were uh, in issue 2008. And I'm not going through all of my issues. You'll understand that I just kind of did some spot pulls. Um, I won't make you sit here through all of my favorites, but some of them, this one just got stuck in here. I don't think I have one in that one. And then here's another one. This is an issue 2010 and it was by Homespun Elegance and it was a little different take on that same style of finish. Not sure what that's called. I'll have to look. Um, I really thought that was pretty. And then, you know, Blue Ribbon Designs and Prairie Schooler, all those different designers have ongoing series in all of these magazines. And then this one I found we oftentimes have people ask us, where do you find band samplers or things that are banded to stitch? And I had to pull this out to show you because it's an example of a Christmas ornament that's done in bands. That little tree right there. It's very cute. And that was designed by Casey um, Bornaguria Designs. Um, and she calls it Band Sampler Christmas Tree. Uh, she has a series of ornaments throughout these uh, issues also that are really pretty.
this one I really liked. Now I got stuck with this one and I think I can work my way out of it now but at the time I stitched it I couldn't. This is by Twisted Oak Designs. It's called The Little House Mouse and I'm going to show you two pictures. That's the, that's the ornament right there. Got a little poinsettias on it. But when you look at the actual ornament itself, it's got two parts. And I will show you the back part of it. It says, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And that's the picture of the mouse, the back of the ornament up there. And so I actually stitched both parts, but I stitched it on fabric that was a different count. And the finishing in the back, there's my other little side there. Isn't that cute? The finishing in the back, I believe had um, a pattern, uh, like a template that you could use to put the mouse together. But it didn't fit right. I didn't have a copier at the time that would um, enlarge or reduce. And so now I'm excited because now I can put that little guy together and he can hang on my tree. I'm so glad I went back to look for this because I found a lot of neat things. This one I have not done anything with. But if you like Mosey and Me patterns, look at this Santa and sheep right here. Is that not... I think it's the colors that I find really rich and it just it's just so cute so I think that might be on my list of ornaments to stitch this year I just think it's adorable and there's another mosey and me pattern that's a Santa that's in one of these issues too that I really like and then the last one I tagged to show you today is another Lottie Da. I said there would be another pattern with the stars on it. And this one is in the 2013 issue, and it's called a Star Garland. Isn't that gorgeous? Wouldn't that be pretty if you had a mantle to put across the mantle? I mean, you wouldn't have to do that just at Christmas either. That would be kind of pretty anywhere you wanted to use it to decorate. I really like it. So that's in my sights too. And then there's more Prairie Schooler and more Blue Ribbon and the list goes on. Plum Street Samplers, Glory B, By the Bay Needle Art. So, Phyllis Hoffman was the, I believe, founder and owner, publisher, she did it all, uh, for Just Cross Stitch for a long time. Um, it changed over to Annie's, oh gosh, in the last five years maybe. Um, but this is back, I think, in their heyday when they were putting out this ornament issue. And I really like them. It kind of also has to do with the fact that those designs are designs I really enjoy. Um, they're in my bailiwick, if you will, of things I like to stitch. So that made them really attractive to me. Um, so now you know where Noel is found. I will put it in the description box. Um, thank you for asking. Thank you for the afternoon of entertainment that I got looking for it. And at this point, I want to show you what I've been stitching myself. Before I do that, I'm going to do a camera check again. Straighten that out. Nobody is actually bumping the table or anything. I, maybe it's just supposed to be that way today. We are joining the Fat Quarter Shop, as you might have heard. Uh, in our last two videos, we talked about it. Um, we finished the first week. Last Friday was the beginning of the second week. This was my first week. And you'll see mine's a little different. I chose a different color fabric. I do have the name of the color, but it's attached to my pattern and I will put it in the description box. It's also a 28 count instead of a 25 count. I'm going to be finishing this in a particular way. Um, 
I've actually pulled a friend in to help me with it. I'm anxious to get it done. The second pattern came out Friday, and I started working on the second portion of it. Um, this is the beginning of a bush that goes in front of a house that sits here. But um, after I started it, I realized I'm going to move it out because of what I'm doing with mine. So I'm going to be moving my bush over a little farther this direction instead of where I started it. So I'm going to get that figured out so I know what I'm doing. And then did you see my little bluebird needle minder? I got one for Deb and I. We wouldn't want to lose our needle while we do this project, you know. She was stitching hers, and she's doing hers, um, and told me that, and, and you'll see it, I'm sure, on her next video, but she, maybe I shouldn't say anything, but it's whatever size her bird is, it's almost the same size as her needle minder when she finished stitching. She thought that was funny. The colors um, go really pretty with this, as well as with the white. Deb is stitching hers on the white. So there's the palette. Isn't that pretty? It, I have to be careful though, because I did grab the wrong shade one time and I'm stitching and I'm thinking, wait, that part of the bird doesn't look any different. <laughs> I, had, I had them all marked. I just grabbed the wrong one. So I'm trying to keep track of that. Then I went back with my daughter living down in Florida now and my granddaughters. I was trying to think of something fun for them. I know I did the mermaid for Carrie for her birthday. You might have seen that in a previous video. Um, but there was a class we took. Let me show it to you on a picture because my pattern isn't here, but I have a picture of said pattern. There it is. Um, this is called Steampunk Sea Serpent. Isn't that fun? Look at that. It's got all kinds of moving parts in it. It's a, it's a kind of a takeoff on that fish that lives down where there's no light and there's the bio-luminous parts of things that live there. And on that fish, this little light that's hanging here is part of its bio-luminous um, characteristics. It's a really interesting fish. But um, when she taught the class, part of the project um, was the holder at the top, too, to go with the steampunk theme. And then this was the color palette. She gave us all a pre-threaded card to go with it, so these are the colors, so it's, it's kind of bright and busy. I think my granddaughters would love having that hang in their room or maybe the bathroom. I don't know. Anyway, I got to working on that because I thought that would be fun. So that's, that's going on. And then, I couldn't stop at two. So you might remember I was stitching Sweet Pea. I had already stitched April Showers. And then this was a spring wreath, it's called. Um, there's another picture of it on the back. This is a Blackbird Design. Three stockings for April is the name of the pattern. Excuse me again. We'll do this a lot. Um, and the funny thing was, and I'm, I'm getting better at this. This spring wreath only has two colors. One is clover and one is avocado. And they're very pretty. And I picked out a neutral like I did the other stockings on. And I started working on it. In fact, I spent quite a lot of time making sure that I could lay out both parts of the stocking on here and also still have another piece to do another stocking from another month that I wanted to do in a similar fabric. Once I got it all laid out, I sat down and started stitching. And then I finally set it aside. I thought, why is this frustrating me? Um, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to get a different fabric out. So I did. I pulled another piece of fabric a couple days later and started again. And what a difference. Now I'm going to 
zoom zoom on this and get it done. Um, but I'm going to stop. If I don't care for the way the fabric's working or the threads are working, I'm, I'm going to just shift. I've got a lot of pieces in my project bin that are there because I ran into something like that and I just wouldn't change what I was doing. I wanted to do with what I started and and I'm, I'm not going to tie myself up that way anymore. Too many things to work on to get tied up over something like that. I can move on to another piece of fabric. Then you might remember shifting to the bead department. You might remember I had done Felicity Felicity Rose by Fern Ridge Collections. I've done her now, it'll be four different times. This was my first one. And I'm sure you all remember her if you watched our videos. Then I did one in greens and one in, I would call it rose and pink colors. And then this one that I'm doing now is for Deb, and she wanted the greens, which I call olive. So olive is well underway. <laughs> I think you can see her. She's still attached to my stitching card, but there she comes, and she's in greens with brown hair. And I'm going to have some fun with the um, fringe on this. I've got a, another idea for that, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing how it works out. I'm still waiting. I know I showed you the beads I just bought, but I'm still waiting on another batch of beads from Fire Mountain Gems that go with the fringe on this one. So when that comes in, I'll get back to work on that part of it. Now, I'm going to adjust this again. I think I'm going to get somebody to come hold this camera when I do my filming. Maybe that's what I need to do just... You can't see it, but right now I can barely not even see anything on my screen. It's But the camera's being held, so that's good. Um, let's see. Oh, I forgot to show you something else I was working on. Just a second. Forgot about it. It's back here. This piece is really fun. And I'm going to show you the threads, too. This is called... Tis a small gift fob. And it's by Erica Michaels. Can you see that? Isn't that pretty? Now that's done on gauze, but this is 30 count gauze. This is not 40 count. And she gives you instructions if you're going to use a hoop, how to mount the gauze onto fabric. Um, it's really close though, as far as sizing. I had, I counted this, I can't tell you how many times, because you have to have at least a half inch of room all the way around each piece in order to join them. So I finally counted it from side to side and then marked it and counted it again. I was so worried that I would not have it centered properly and which I don't know why it bothered me because I could have gotten another piece of gauze, but um, I wanted to make sure it worked. But it is so rich looking. And they're tent stitches. Um, you can do it continental, you can do it basket weave. She talks about all the different options. And then these are the four colors that are in it. I substituted one color. Um, she used parchment, cranberry, baby spinach and brandy were the four uh, gentle arts wool colors and I looked at the oatmeal as an option that's this lighter color but I didn't think it looked as striking as this one which is called shaker white I really like that in place of the parchment so I substituted that shaker white for that color. And I, I really, I'm enjoying sitting in the evening working on this. It, if I'm not really wanting to do a lot of counting, uh, but I want to stitch, it goes very quickly. And, it, and I'm really enjoying that.
now get to the other pile. Sorry about having to turn. In order to get the camera, the table, and my work surface all where I can reach it, I just have to do this. It's just the way it works out. I have a small floor space here. Let's go to the peyote finishes first. <laughs> this is a little bit this is a little bit extreme, but that's what my last couple weeks have been like. This is one that I purchased a while ago, and it is the train by Fern Ridge Collections. I thought that was really fun. Deb really thought it was cool the way they have the, the double wide bead that holds the fringe together like train tracks. Isn't that neat? So the fringe looks like train tracks. And then it has these little steampunk hardware sprockets on it. And then the train at the top. Nice long bead at the top too. Makes it really pretty. So that one was fun. And then I did one that I had done a while ago. We gave away one of these, one of our subscriber tributes, um, which was the Pear Fob, also by Fern Ridge Collections. I have a couple different colors substituted in here uh, from the original. I do that, like to use up what I have, so a little bit different fringe on the bottom of that one. And then this was a new one, uh, a gift to me when we went on our Super Bowl weekend down at Salty Yarns, which actually turned out to be the last getaway weekend we had because following that, our March getaway was canceled. That would have been our Fiber Fest at Liberty Mountain Resort and then our Guild Retreat. So this was our last getaway. And Sandy bought me that, and it's really pretty, and has really rich colors. Um, and I love the little snowflake charm. And then, very different from the other fringes, um, these at the bottom have head pins in them, and they attach with the head pin instead of having a bead at the bottom. Very elegant. And then this garland that goes across the top, this is a swag here and fills in the top of the fringe. Really, really pretty. It's got a really nice silver and deep blue tone to it. And then one of my designs, this was done by me for our guild giveaway. Um, I designed this at Christmas to sort of emulate um, our logo that has the pomegranate basket, pomegranates in it, that you see in a lot of samplers and on different motifs. So bearing that in mind, you might be able to see it on the fob. And then the bottom, I did a little differently than the one in December. Um, I used some different beads that look more like pomegranate seeds. So that was fun. And... Um, I may actually be doing a class for this. I'll let you know if that comes to fruition. That's going to be fun. So, that's what, five fobs I got done in the last couple weeks? That makes me feel busy. <laughs> it didn't seem like I was that busy. It goes pretty quickly for me. Um... Let me just double check make sure I didn't leave anything out. All right. Now, I had mentioned about the comments and letting me know um, which of the twins you thought I was. Um, but I also want your help with something else. I finished another piece that I, I'm sure if you've watched our other videos, you probably saw me show Quincy by Stacy Nash Primitives. Um, Quincy's the little owl fob. I saw the Animal Cracker series. And I saw this one and I thought, you know what? It's a little smaller endeavor than some of her bigger pieces. Um, so I thought until I started it and I realized that's all full coverage there with the the background and the face. And <laughs> it took a little longer than I thought. But um, 
I finished him. That's where I got the ribbon for. You can see the brown ribbon they put on Quincy. It calls for a brown velveteen fabric, which I went online and I ordered, um, but it hasn't shown up. So I don't know if my order ever got processed or if the company I ordered it from is just um, maybe not at full speed right now because of the conditions. So um, I called Deb, phone a friend, Lifeline. I said, Deb, I need some fabric to go with Quincy. So I sent a picture of Quincy. Here's Quincy, by the way. All done. All done up in his Sunday best. Isn't he cute? He really is cute. Now, I was pretty sure the brown velveteen would be pretty, but the problem is how do you match the brown? I'm doing this with a picture and not in person and that made me nervous. So she very nicely provided me with two shades that she thought from the picture I sent her would look good. I have a choice between this gingham that has sort of a two-tone, almost a yellow and a brown, and then this brown with, I'm gonna call them white daisies because they're, there's quite a bit of white in there. They remind me of what my mother, I think my mother called them bachelor buttons. I'm not sure if I have that right. But anyway, so I have these two colors and I wanna decide which color to put with Quincy. So I thought, let's see what everybody thinks. I kind of know which one I'm leaning towards, but if you wanna give me your opinion, I'd love to hear about it. And then the other ribbons I ordered were specifically for this. This brown one, I think, is almost just tailor-made for that particular background. And then I had two other shades, and I did not know what fabric I was using when I ordered these shades. Um, I just tried to pull shades off of Quincy these two colors here. One is vanilla, and I forget what the other one is, but either of those would look pretty on that fabric. So let me know which of these two fabrics you think would be great, and I'm going to try to put that together before I see you again. I'll show you which one I ended up with. And then I was talking about the stockings earlier, and I showed you the spring stocking, the third one uh, that I started down here. But I didn't mention Sweet Pea. There's another picture of Sweet Pea. I think because I finished Sweet Pea. I really like that. I think it came out really cute. I changed it up like I did the other stocking. Excuse me again. I I don't know if you can see the stocking behind me or not, but um, the other stocking, April Showers, is hanging on my closet. Um, and I used beads for the rain in the April Showers, and it was really pretty. So they had some little motifs around the stocking on this one, and I decided to put beads in those spots so that it shares that same look. These are really easy to finish. You put a piece of stabilizer in between, well, on the back of your stitching, um, and then you cut two pieces. Um, the back is just plain linen. The front is the one that fits your stitching, and then you just whip stitch them together. They're not lined. I mean, they don't function as a stocking, but they're adorable. And I like quick finishes, so that was nice. And then the beads are just part of that big stash of beads I showed you not long ago that um, that I keep on hand to dig through. So I pulled red ones out for that one. And then my final finish that I did since we saw each other, I finished the Thimble Purse. This was by Brenda Gervais. This pattern is no longer being produced. It's no longer being printed, I should say. So if you happen into a store that still has one in stock, or you have a friend who will share, which was how I came by it, be able to stitch it. This is 
so much fun. It's not difficult. It's done on 40 count. Um, I ordered the hardware from China. Um, Super Bowl weekend was when I bought it or ordered it. I think it's like right after our Super Bowl weekend. And this is how it came out. She's very tiny. She fit. Um, I worked really hard because looking at this picture, uh, you can see up at the top, some of the stitching is buried into the hardware. And then on the sides, uh, it's in the seam allowance. And I wanted to, and on the bottom, you can see there, you lose a little of the stitching. And I wanted to see if I couldn't preserve as much of that as possible. The bottom, I almost got the full design in. And then I played with the sides and they came out really close. But I did set it down a little farther so that I did get the, the complete top. Um, only visible on the model was that part of it. Um, I like having that at the top. And I'm not sure, maybe there's a reason they did it that way. Um, it might be their hardware was a little different because I ordered mine uh, not through their site and hers, um, in fact, I can tell looking at it, it's a different shape. So that might have something to do with it. But um, this is the final piece of silk ribbon that I got uh, from Thunder Moon. And I used it to tie up my thimble purse. I just put a knot in the top. Uh, they suggested a piece of waxed hemp or some kind of string like that through the hole. Um, and then I said I would uh, choose the lining. First, I have to show you that my little thimbles are in my thimble purse. Um, but the lining I chose was the lining that Deb had. I really liked that lining with it. It's got a, what would you call that? Sort of a steel blue that matches the skirt that I did on the lady. And then it's got a bit of gold in it. And I really like the way that came out. So I have to decide whether I put this in my curio cabinet or whether I wear it when I stitch with my thimbles in it, but I am so excited about her. She's so cute. First, before I end this video, I want to thank um, all the local needle workshops and stores and designers and everybody who's gone above and beyond to continue to make our stitching experience um, exciting, even during this time where we can't get together to do it. Um, I mean, they've kept us in supplies and kept us stitching. Um, they've put out patterns in PDF formats. They've done things that they never did before just to make us happy. And I really appreciate it. And thank you so much. It really helps to have something that's consistent and constant when other things are changing such a light speed around you. Um, I want you to know there are several new gadgets on their way. Um, I thought they might be here before this video, but now it looks like I won't receive them until next weekend. So perhaps by our next video, I'll share a new gadget with you. Um, and Deb will see you soon on her next video. And until then, share the joy of needlework. Thank you. Bye-bye.